Hi everybody, Kai Waza with you, and uh, we are continuing looking through the Hawaiian record collection, uh, finishing up, and we will finish up the, the, the uh, letter S today. Today we are looking at the sort of sub-collection of other South Pacific records other than Hawaiian. And I do, I don't have a huge collection of those, but I, well, it would be big to some people, but uh, I don't have a huge collection, but I have some, and we can definitely get through the S's today, so we will we will do that. Uh, first up on our look at South Pacific records, I have the world famous St. Joseph's Maori Girls Choir, Pokare Kare. Um, Maori, in case you are not aware, is the, uh, the name of the indigenous Pacific Islanders of New Zealand. They're called Maori. And interestingly, um, if you read a lot of Victorian novels, as I do, uh, there was a time when uh, Westerners referred to all Pacific Islanders as Maoris. So you'll, you'll see that in some of the older writing. They talk about the Maori in Hawaii or the, the Maoris in Tonga or wherever. Um, and in fact, the, Hawaiian, the word the Hawaiian people use nowadays is Kanaka Maoli for um, the Aboriginal people. And Kanaka Maoli and Maori, it's the same word, actually. It just kind of means first people, really. Uh, anyway, the history of St. Joseph's Maori Girls Choir. This is uh, kind of, it's a, a, it's a private school for girls, and everybody learned the Maori language and culture and a, take a practical course in home craft. And it's on the... Uh, uh, it's from 19, what is it, the date? I guess there wasn't a date on this. It's kind of an earlier one. Uh, and it's on the red Viking, the orange Viking label. You see a lot of that in South Pacific Records, orange Viking label, because uh, Viking Records out of, which is a New Zealand company, did record a lot of many, many, that was their thing, South Pacific Records. Different artists from different islands in the South Pacific. Uh, this one, Sweet, Sweet Sounds of the South Pacific, is also by the St. Joseph Maori Girls Choir of New Zealand. This is a gate, nice gatefold one. A little uh, tiki action going on there. Beautiful picture on the inside. Um, this is used on another album. I have this cover as the cover. And uh, on the back... Letting you know it is a South Pacific souvenir record. I don't know where they would have sold that as a souvenir exactly. Maybe it performed or something. Uh, anyway, on we go. This next artist is from the island of Guam called Johnny Sablon. Now, I only have a few of his records. His records are quite expensive when you find them usually because uh, he's, I guess, a bit of an icon on Guam. Uh, this record I got like somewhere at a, a thrift store or something really cheap because the cover is really beaten up but the record is okay. Like I said you find his records on eBay and other places and they're usually quite expensive. Uh, he recorded it in the 70s. It's on the Hafadai records which is just the Chamorro greeting. Um, this album is called My Chamorans. Now, on Guam, the indigenous people are called Chamorro, and their language is called Chamoran. And uh, if you don't know much about the history of Guam, which I suppose, why would you if you were someplace else? Uh, but it was um, one of the, the islands in the Pacific that was really the most decimated or the most attacked uh, during the colonial times and when Spain attacked I mean it was really really wiped out and uh, literally and very few people are pure Chamorro I mean because they killed they actually like the Spanish actually killed massive amounts of people uh, and the language um, was you know not totally lost but pretty much lost and Johnny Sablon uh, in the 70s was kind of part of a movement to bring back the Chamorran language for more people to use on a daily basis. So his songs, he would record recorded a lot of uh, Chamorro language songs, uh, like this one. I have another album from him too, Hafadai, 
which is a greeting, and uh, Toto, I don't know, Toto Malik, I don't speak Chamorro, how are you? So I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he kind of led a, a, a movement for that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it was very successful. My understanding of, of Guam now in 2015 is that very few people speak Chamorro, and most of the young people don't really have much of an interest in the culture or the language that much. Um, the opposite of Hawaii, where Hawaiian language and Hawaiian culture has actually become much more vibrant, and there's more people speaking Hawaiian than there have been in, in you know, a couple hundred years. Um, anyway, this album, I, there's a song on this album I love called There's a Place in Micronesia. It's like a bossa nova. It's amazing. And uh, I love that song. Uh, this is the other uh, Johnny Sablon album I have, Guam, USA. It's a gatefold from 1974. I'm going to fix that. It's falling apart. Um, and this one was is with, uh, I don't know, this was kind of more, uh, has an orchestra and a chorus that rather than just him singing. And uh, they redid There's a Place in Micronesia. It, it's just so awesome. I'll have to play part of it as a sample. And uh, the song Guam USA is really great, too. Uh, Johnny Sablon. Now, uh... This is uh, recorded by, this is a compilation, um, Samoa Sings by the Gray Sisters with Edison Heather and his Samoans, um, recorded in Apia Western Samoa, Viking label, that's that one. And then I have another one here, also from Viking. Samoana, Samoana, the Samoan Serenaders. Um, I'm not talking about the songs that much because they're all Samoan language songs. And yeah, that's, I'm, I don't speak Samoan. Um, I have to tell you honestly, too, another Viking Records. Uh, yeah, Samoan music, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going after more of it. I used to buy everything I could find, if it was, you know, fairly cheap. Uh, but Samoan music is not exactly my cup of tea, I have to say, honestly. So, uh, I'm only getting a Samoan record if it's, you know, in a dollar bin somewhere now, and I'll do it. But I just haven't, I don't know. It's a personal thing, I just don't like it as much. The music. Tropical Fiji. This one is by the Suva Fijian Drama Group, who performed in uh, public performances, tourist hotels, and of course taking part in the singing competitions during the famous Hibiscus Festival there. I do love this picture. Um, this is a different one, recorded in New Zealand, Salem Records. I love the picture because, uh, you know, it's a guy on it. You always, they're always, you know, seeing romanticized images of women on a lot of these Hawaiian Pacific records. So it's kind of nice to, you know, right? Have a guy like that. Interesting record I like here. The Solomon Islands Spectacular by the Solomon Islands Dance and Theater Group. This one is from 1972. It's also Viking on the orange label. And uh, this one was recorded, as it say here, it says this is a, the dance theater group recorded at the first South Pacific Festival of Arts, which was held in Suva, Fiji. And this group was very popular, they say. And I want this shirt. I love Hawaiian shirts. I have a collection of them. And I love this shirt because it has images from the Solomon Islands, Guadalcanal, and some other things. And I just, I love that. I just got a Hawaiian shirt that has English and UK beaches and things on it, Jersey and such. Kind of, I like that idea. Uh, finally today, wow, I thought I was going to do this so fast and I'm taking longer. Uh, this is a, a cooperative album by some different, different artists working together called Songs of Guam. And I actually have this on another release, the same album. It has a different title and it. it'll come up later, different cover, but 
was released more than once. Um, on Globe Records, interestingly, it was recorded in Hawaii. Some of the artists are from Hawaii, Virginia King. But it's uh, Virginia King, Mike Garcia, Christy Mendez, Calvin Cullen, and a chorus all singing together. Um, I would say this is maybe a, a more tourist-oriented record. Um, not really native songs. They're all... Uh, Guam is good, the song of Guam, the island of Cocos, the Ladronas Latte Stones, Honeymoon Island. It's more of a tourist-oriented album, and I love the picture. So, uh... <laughs> Pacific music for you this morning and that concludes really concludes the letter S in my Hawaiian Exotica South Pacific record collection and next time we will start on the letter B okay have a great week I'll talk to you later if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more Thank you. And leave comments, too. I mean, anybody that has any of these records or has a comment about the topic, by all means, uh, your comments are welcome. Thank you.